Now this level... Ugh. This level must have been what convinced the master to turn on women. <coughs> and to go straight for the cock. Because there is a god-awful hag bitch boss here. It's very difficult to beat. For mainly only one reason, and that's the fact that, once again, you're too damn slow. But her level is one of the more forgiving levels I've seen. This is one of the few times that you'll have a giant ass level, but have extra lives in it. So you can get to a certain point, close to the end of this level, and basically have infinite tries there, so long as you get the extra life. God, that guy was annoying. God, for Christ's sake. Look how long it takes him to get across there. Just walking. And what's my reward? I get orgasmed in the foot by a seahorse. This also will mark the time that you first encounter a regenerative item that gives you more than one ball of life. It gives you five. Now, maybe in lower difficulties it gives you ten. I've noticed in some of the emulator versions of this on here, they give you ten. That was not the case when I played. In fact, regenerative items are basically a sham in this game. They're like the cake in Portal. You know? The cake is a lie. Well, regenerative items in this game are a lie. Because one regenerative item is very rarely enough to make up for the damage that one enemy can do to you in a hit. I mean, my god, the average guy does one ball of damage at least. If not two. Most enemies I've encountered, especially midway, do two. Projectiles are usually the weapons that are attacks that don't do two damage to you. Now you don't have to kill that shark in actuality, but I have such disdain for them that I felt morally obligated to try to kill his ass. PETA can sue my ass, for all I care. PETA didn't have to make it through a giant haunted ass underwater temple palace. Sharks grabbing at their dick. That is a very difficult jump to make. I am not going to lie to you. It's kind of like the jump at the very beginning in the hollowed out tree, but not quite as bad because you can actually make it back to the ledge. Now here's where your extra life is. You don't have to you don't have to kill that shark, but it's safe too, because if he hits you, you're going to miss this. There's the one-up. You always want that one-up. Then you can just drop down and pretend that your cock is 15 miles longer than it is. And this was just stupid. I should have jumped up to the next level much quicker than I did. Now I'm thoroughly getting my ass beat. I will say, the shield is quite useful. In most games, when you have a shield, it's more cosmetic. In this, it is one of the saving graces. So here's the hag bitch, who doesn't even have a body. She's just this giant floating head. You certainly don't want that 
pus-infested, gangrenous tongue getting a hold of you. So beat her ass. Do not let the spikes that are chasing you touch you. And then you'll get to the actual fight. The queen herself is invincible. And when you're playing on the Super Nintendo, those things she surrounds herself with take two or three hits to kill. That little flamey thing in the back, in the middle of that statue's JJ, is what you want to kill. Energy balls work best. The Phoenix magic, the giant ro uh, the roid rage ability, that is very useful to use as well, if you're high up. And then you are finished with the palace level. Now, I didn't give her any sack, but that's because I really am attached to the health of my scrotum. Ugh. <laughs>